Hey everyone, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me talking about the books I bought during the fall time. And yes, I'm well aware it is gonna be January when this video goes up. Yeah, it goes up on the 1st. I forgot that I bought books in the fall time. Not gonna lie, I feel like I bought so many books because there are two stacks next to me that I don't even know, one, if it's gonna fit in this thumbnail photo that I'll be taking in a little bit, and two, I think I bought so much that I blocked it from my memory. So, because there's so many, and I can only do so much talking before I run out of steam, and I still have my wrap-up to go through, and <laughs> that one's gonna be a mess too, let's just get into the video. We're gonna start off this unusually large haul with the trilogy that I had recently purchased, and that was the Grishaverse trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I have Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising. I bought these books because my book Twitter friends and I are going along and reading through the original Grishaverse trilogy for the TV show. I believe we also said we're going to be reading through Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, and Kingdom of Scars, or King of Scars, one of the two titles. Uh, so yeah, I have already read Shadow and Bone. I have a reading vlog on that. Essentially, the Grishaverse follows Alina, who finds out she's Grisha. It's like this these people who are who have magical abilities, and she gets thrown into this world that she never expected she'd ever be thrown into, like every YA protagonist ever. And she has to figure out why she has these powers, how these were developed, as well as fighting along, fighting against this thing called the Darkling which I feel like the Darkling should have been. I just feel like she should have sided with the Darkling TBH. I feel like, I don't know, I like him. I also think that he and Mal should be together, but we're not going to get into that until like Siege and Storm where I can gush about it in another reading vlog. So if you guys want to hear my thoughts on the first book, please go ahead and check out the reading vlog. Any reviews for these books or videos that I have done for these books will be left down below. Thinking about it, I feel like I only have this many books in my pile because my friend TB from TB Writer, which I will leave his stuff down below as well, suggested to everyone in the group chat that there was the um, book depository was having this huge sale. So all of us, like the book obsessed nerds that we were, went in and bought a bunch of books. Thankfully I didn't fall for his trap for buying things for Black Friday. Didn't stop me from buying like 10 different books. So the next book that I bought, I think this was the book, one of the book depository books, is Sorcerer of the Wild Peace by Kai Ashante Wilson. This I believe is a native? It's a high fantasy adult story that is queer. Um, TB again suggested I buy it because I was looking for more adult high fantasy and this was one of them. There's muffin on it because I was eating a muffin on top of it while I was preparing all the other books. I think this is Demigods, Sorcerer, Beautiful Man with a Song. Amazing. I want to say this is Asian? No, I don't know. I think this is based off of... <sighs> Shoot. Either... I think it's Native American, isn't it? I want to say this is like based off... I could be horribly terribly wrong as I typically am with these things. I can't tell. I feel like it is. So I could be wrong, could be right, but we'll find out when I am editing and actually look up what this book is, what, like the synopsis of this book and everything else. But I, this is interesting, it's a novella so it's pretty short and I don't know why I didn't pick this up for Queerlit Readathon. I'm just dumb. The next book I bought was Tiger Lily by Jody Lynn Anderson. This is a retelling of Tiger Lily's story. Basically it's about the Peter Pan myth, I think it's her falling in love with Peter Pan and then Peter Pan choosing Wendy. We get to see more of T Tiger Lily in terms of like her indigenous background really since they are from Wonderland so she's technically not Native American. But her concept is based heavily in Native American um, culture so there's that. I want to pick up the original Peter Pan before I read any Peter Pan retellings which is really upsetting because I haven't picked that up yet. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this once I figure out where do I can buy a cute copy of Peter Pan. I say cute because Peter Pan is not a very cute children's story, but I'm sure the cover is probably aesthetically pleasing to my eyes, so that's what I'm basing cute off of. The next book is The Magicians by, Levi Gr by Lev Grossman. This is an adult urban fantasy that essentially is like what you would do if you put Harry Potter in college. Just kidding, this is... Okay, so this is what happens if you put the magicians, if you give Harry Potter 
According to this Sir George R. R. Martin's blurb, the magician's is to Harry Potter as a shot of Irish whiskey is to a glass of weak tea. Hogwarts was never like this. So it's essentially an older version of Harry Potter mixed with Narnia. I'm a huge fan of the TV show. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I talk about the TV show all the time. Margot is literally my wife. I will die for her and marry her. But I have never read the book, and my friend who read the book said it's vastly different from the TV show, so I want to pick this up sometime soon and see how it is. I'm always up for like a weird dark academia slash Narnia situation that happens in adult fantasy, so I will let you guys know when I get into this book. The next book that I bought in the months of the fall time is one that actually I haven't heard a ton about. All I know is that Emma Books absolutely adores this book, and that is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. I don't know a ton about this book other than there's like a piece of toast on it. I think it's essentially one of our main characters is an atheist, and he goes to a Catholic school for some odd reason. And then there he meets this other group of people who don't necessarily fall under the concept of Catholicism. So he forms this club called Heretics Anonymous, and I heard it's super funny, and as a very weak Catholic myself, I should find interest in how this story goes. So we'll find out. The next book that I hauled is The Cold in Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. I, how have I never said this name the first time before? Okay, whatever. Essentially, this is a Medusa retelling. I heard rumors that this had some queer aspect in it, but I could be wrong, but there is a Medusa retelling in it. Essentially, a curse goes around and takes like girls from each village, and this year, a girl that the main girl has made friends with has gotten cursed. So she goes through this long and this long journey where she finds a way to break the curse. I wish I knew names. Mila, Myla, Mila, ha ha ha. I found out recently that this is a Medusa retelling, so I'm excited to pick this up. But also, I'm reading this like the back part, and it says, "If you see a snake, kill it, then burn it." So I'm like, if this is a Medusa retelling, and we're just gonna demonize Medusa. Y'all are going to have to have really good writing for me to like this book because like low-key Medusa deserves so much more credit than what she is ever given in mythology and in popular culture. So if y'all are going to tell me that you're just going to kill pe kill Medusalings for the sake of this curse, then I need you guys to fix your shit because Medusa deserves better. The next book I purchased was A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. This is the sequel to An Ember in Ashes and it essentially has dual perspective where we follow Leia who has been under the impression, the oppression, not impression, of the Empire her entire life. That is until one day she stumbles upon her brother's drawings of weapons and results in a raid where her, she watches her grandparents be killed while her brother is taken away prisoner. She then joins the rebellion that her brother was a part of to not only uncover more about where her, where her brother is, but also learn about her past. The other perspective follows Elias. Elias. Not this again. A soldier with an E name, whose name I do not know how to pronounce because no one puts pronunciation guides in any freaking book, um, is a soldier for the Empire. He has been raised his entire life to be a soldier and nothing more. That is until one day he finds out that maybe this life isn't the one that he's aiming for and he should find something else to do. It's not what he wants. I loved the first book. I really enjoyed it. I've been meaning to pick up the second book. I'm hoping to read it in January. And this book takes place directly after the events of the first book, I believe, where they're running away from the bad guys and they're trying to figure out their life, but they're running away. The next book that I bought is Miranda in Milan by Catherine Duckett. This is a retelling of The Tempest, but queer, and through Miranda's eyes. I am really excited to get into this book because that's all I really need to know, but I need to reread The Tempest. It's been like four years, I believe, since... No. Yes, four years since I read The Tempest, and the only memories I have of it were the very unhappy memories I had being in that class, and then the anime, which is Blast of Tempest, which has nothing to do with the actual play. So, very excited to see where this goes. But, I mean, it's gay, it's Shakespeare, it's a retelling of uh, from a woman's perspective. I'm definitely going to enjoy it, like... The next book I bought was The Prince's Gambit by C.S. Picot. This is the sequel to The Captive Prince by C.S. Picot, and it's essentially the main guy, Demon? Damon. Damon. After his father is killed, he ends up being overthrown and has become a sex slave for Prince Laurent. 
and it kind of traverses through this very dark and disturbing world that they are a part of, like Prince Laurent is a part of. Like Damon has to keep his identity as secret as they are about to go to war. A lot of trigger warnings in this book if you ever decide to pick it up. Uh, lots of... Uh, surprisingly, there's no homophobia. But there's a lot of... Um, there is sexual assault, there is torture, there is abuse, there is pedophilia, pedophilia, however you want to pronounce it. And I read the first book going into it thinking it was something vastly different. It was something vastly different. And I, while I did enjoy it, I wish there had been more of a warning than... Because, like, all these books have it. And it says mature audience on the back in, like, tiny little ass print. And I don't know about you, but adult fantasy or not, I would like a warning saying, like, at the first page being like, just a heads up, here are the trigger warnings. Or maybe this book has discussions of sexual assault, pedophilia, violence against women random shit like that. But that did not. So I was not sure about my enjoyment of the first book, but this is such a critically acclaimed series that I'm gonna try to push through the second and see what I think. It's a very slow burn romance as I have gathered thus far. The only thing that I really dislike is that there wasn't much of a warning going into it. It's like, I don't know, I would have just liked a warning that wasn't mature audiences in the back in tiny print where no one really looks. But we'll see how I like this series. I feel like it's it has potential to be really good. The writing is really great, but I just I just don't know how to feel about the other aspects of the book. And I feel like once I finish the series out and maybe things develop a little bit more, it'll make sense to me. The next book I got was actually a gift from my friend Sam. She visited London for a week over, I think, summer. She ended up sending me a copy of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You guys have heard me talk about this book several times over my chat and my channel. I'm not going to talk about it very much. Just know Fleetwood Mac inspired, 60s aesthetic, drag, drugs, booze, interview format, historical fiction. That's all you need to know. The next book I bought is one that I've actually enjoyed and I think is one of my favorite books of 2019 and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a new adult rom contemporary romance following Alex Claremont Diaz who is the first son of the United States. His mother is currently running for re-election. During one of the events where they go to the royal wedding, Alex ends up in a bit of a scandal where he and the Prince of Wales, Henry, ends up making a mess of things and in order to avoid said press media fatality, I guess. They pretend that they are best friends on social media to be like, oh no, it was like a joke gone wrong and not that they hate each other. And then they fall in love. I really enjoyed this book. I made a full review of it in my channel, so I will leave that down below. I think it's just so cute. It's just so fluffy. It's a very fun and quick read. And I am very excited for anything Casey has to come out with. The next book I bought was actually isn't a fiction book, surprisingly enough. Most of these books are fiction, and that is Dead, Dead Girl's Essays on Surviving an American Obsession by Alice Boleyn. This is a collection of essays by Alice Boleyn talking about how media and society tend to be super obsessed with this concept of dead women. Um, we see that a lot in like things like Special Victim or like other true crime aspects. We only see really the woman as like a commodity almost for the crime. We don't see her or her life beforehand, just that she had she had this awful thing committed to her, and that is about the extent of our knowledge. I gave this book, I believe, a three stars. I liked the writing, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the book that was advertised. There was only really one essay on the concept of this title, and the rest were about Alice Bullen's life. I think Alice Bullen is a great writer. I will continue to pick up more works from them, but I don't think this book necessarily was marketed correctly. The next book on my list is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a young adult dark academia mystery thriller novel following Stevie, uh, the main girl who goes to this very elite school where everyone has a specific talent and one thing, and hers is true crime. She then takes it upon herself to make her final project of the year, the mystery that has stumped this entire school, where the owner's wife and daughter were taken and eventually killed, and no one found out how. And while she is looking through this mystery and trying to find out more about it, there is another, another mystery that layers this one. I enjoyed this book. I think it was a really quick read. My biggest critique of this book is that the pacing was really weird, and it felt like there is a lot missing with some of the development. But I will continue on with the series, and I hope that I will like it as much as other people have, because I like the concept of this series. I just think that 
it, it's, there was a lot of fleshing out and a lot of different foreshadowing that needed to happen that did not. The next book I bought was The Captain's Verses by Pablo Neruda. This is a collection of short stories by the famous poet slash activist Pablo Neruda. This involves um, his work both in Spanish and in English. I forgot what I gave this rating. I think I... I barely read it in December, so I don't really have much thoughts on it. You guys will see my wrap-up where I talk about this book, so keep an eye out for that. The next book I bought is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is a contemporary novel following a girl. I believe after the events of her grandparents' death, she finds relief in it because she learns that she likes girls and her pa grandparents aren't a big fan of that. Um, then I think this also involves in her going to um, gay conversion therapy camp, so be wary of that if you want to pick this up. That's all I really know about this book. I plan on reading it this month, I believe, so if I get a chance to pick it up, I will let you guys know more of my thoughts. The next book that I bought was Is the Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass. This is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series, and it follows Kale through the events of Empire Storms, just in a different country. Um, that's all I can say. Kale and I are at a disagreement, as I have said multiple times in my channel. I'm hoping this book will redeem him in my eyes. It's pretty thick, so he has a lot of room to grow. But until then, I we are going to be remaining at our moment of disagreement. That's all I can say. The next book I purchased is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is an adult high fantasy slash magical realism slash urban fantasy kind of novel. It just came out this year. You guys know my thoughts on this. I have a lot of thoughts on it. I have a vlog, so everything down below is per usual. This involves Secret Society. Zachary finds an authorless novel in his university's library that, that details a part of his life where he hasn't talked about it. And so in an attempt to, fi in an attempt to find out how they know this about him and the stories that are all that is within this book with his own story in it, he ends up falling into the secret society where libraries are kept and stories are the treasured bits of this world and tries to find out exactly what the Starless Sea is. That's all I can really say without giving it too much thought. Um, definitely going to be one of my favorite books of the year, so keep an eye out for that. As you guys can tell, in my vlog I sob. I sob over this book probably as much as I sob over The Song of Achilles. Like, The Song of Achilles is still number one in terms of me sobbing over and thinking about it in a very consistent manner, but Starless Sea is the next one. If you guys want any more thoughts on like how often I think about this book, I literally saw washi tape at Michael's that had keys on it. And my first thought was, oh my god, I need that so I can do a Starless Sea theme on my bullet journal. I now have the washi tape, but I don't know if I'm going to continue on with my set of attempt to be um, the Starless Sea in that. The next book that I bought is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This, I believe, is either the Waterstones Special Edition or the UK Edition. I believe it's the Waterstones Edition, but it's gorgeous. I love it. I totally worth how much money I spent on it. This basically follows a competition between two magicians, and their playground is essentially the night circus that appears with no warning and disappears appears with no warning during the night and then disappears during the morning and reappears in other places throughout the world. I love this book. That's all I have to say. The next book that I bought was The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the sequel to The Cruel Prince and it involves lots of fae, lots of death, mystery, and intrigue. And I can't say much more because I'm going to end up spoiling the entirety of The Cruel Prince trying to explain to you the plot. But there's a lot of political intrigue, lots of killing and stabbing and humans in the fae world, and lots of I want the power all for myself. That's all I can really tell you. The next book I bought should come as no surprise, and that is the uncensored version of The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This follows, essentially, Dorian Gray as he sells his soul to in a painting to remain young while his painting continues to age and become more decrepit, the more he commits sins. This is the uncensored version, because uh, apparently Oscar Wilde's publisher thought that his original version had too much homoerotic nature in it, too much lustful and sinning. So they had to dumb it down in the version that we read today. So I'm excited to pick this up soon in the future and just cry at all the gay that was hidden from us for how many years until this had been published. The second to last book on this very tall TBR, TBR haul that is becoming more and more frightening, is 
Blanca y Roja by Anna Marie Mecklemore. This is, I believe, aside from the darkest shade of red, Anna Marie Mecklemore's recent work. This is a Swan Lake retelling, and I don't know anything else beside that. There, it, it involves sisters, and it's Swan Lake, and that's all I need to know. So, I'll pick it up eventually. And the last book that I purchased is Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a retelling of the Trojan War through all of the women in the Trojan War. That's all I need to know. Um, I have heard really good things about this book. I love this cover. Definitely worth that um, extra bit that I paid for. So I will let you guys know what I thought about this book. I also bought two graphic novels that I own digitally. digitally and the first one is Heavy Vinyl Volume 1. This is essentially Fight Club, but hella queer and set, I believe, in the 90s. I read the book for Creelit, so you'll be hearing my thoughts on that when I wrap it up. And then the next one that I read, or purchased, was Kim and Kim Volume 1. I forget who writes these volumes, because I haven't written, I don't have that bit written down. But on the cover it'll say, this is essentially from what Jesse told, Jesse from Botez and Books had told me when they recommended this graphic novel, is that it is queer bounty hunters in space. So yeah, I will leave my thoughts on that written down below as well down below if I have that review up or in my wrap up which will be coming up in the coming But that is it for this haul. I hope you guys found some books that you want to read. If you guys want me to do a review on any of these books that I haven't done a review on already, leave that down below. But until next time, hit like, subscribe, comment, and I will talk to you guys everywhere else. Socials will also be down below. Then any reviews from Goodreads videos or otherwise will be linked down below as well as any booktubers that I have mentioned. So until next time, Hope you guys have a great week and have more self-control than me. Bye!